In today's episode, a 39-year-old mother goes to the beach at Cape Town, South Africa with her husband and daughter. Without anyone on the beach that day knowing, a great white shark had managed to get around the beach's shark nets and launches an attack on the mother standing in the shallows. Hit that like button and subscribe right now. This is the terrifying great white shark attack on Kimon Bisongo. Welcome to Final Affliction. Kimon Basango and Diego Malesi met 13 years ago on a beach in Ibiza. It was love at first sight. Kimon, a South African native, spoke English, and Diego could only speak Spanish. But even though they could barely understand each other, they made it their mission to learn how to communicate. And what better way to do that than over their shared love of cooking? After Kimon returned to South Africa, the two remained in touch, with Kimon learning to speak a serviceable Spanish, and Diego took classes that helped him become fluent in English. Diego was the one to make the big move across the seas, moving to one of South Africa's biggest capital cities, Cape Town. Together, they opened their little corner pizzeria, Fernando's Pizza. In between busy shifts and a rich social life, they carved out the time to run a soup kitchen that served the poverty-stricken communities across the city, and Kimon worked closely with the Rainbow House organization to fight homelessness in Cape Town. To say that the two were loved in the community would be an understatement. Kimon and Diego were loved by the rich, by the poor, and everyone in between. Almost everyone knew them by name, and if there was an event, whether that be charitable or a sporting event, they were almost always counted on the guest list. Together, they had a daughter, Luna, and Kimon, now in her mid-thirties, was planning on trying for just one more baby before she reached her forties. But the COVID-19 pandemic threw a wrench in their future plans. Together, the happy little family braved the storm that hit the world, and once it was safe for business to commence as usual, they hit the ground running. Like everyone else, they had their plates full trying to salvage their business, to reopen their soup kitchens. And now that Luna was starting kindergarten, the school runs and sporting events took up a big chunk of their time too. 2022 was an exhausting year, and the family decided that they'd take a short break in September, just as spring came to Southern Africa. The big holiday season would start in December, and with all the preparation that they needed to put in before that time, this would be the last chance that they'd get to catch some of the new warmth that came with spring, and the rush to make up for lost time hit them in full force. Plettenberg Bay was 300 kilometers away, but the four-hour drive went by quickly enough. The warm weather brought a handful of out-of-season holiday-goers and surfers to the resort town. During peak season, the place is packed to the brim, more so than the other coastal hotspots. But in September, it was just full enough to add a little excitement to a weekend away. But not so much that the overcrowded streets and beaches became claustrophobic. The family spent their first afternoon unpacking their luggage at the resort that they booked into, and they took Luna out to play in the shallow pools with her fishing net. After they'd caught a handful of tiny fish and picked up a shiny shell or two for Luna's collection, Diego and Kimon picked up some takeout on their way back to their hotel. Luna was fast asleep by the time they pulled the car in, and Diego carried his daughter to her bed. They decided to let her sleep. She'd like her chicken nuggets just as much for breakfast in the morning. Saturday dawned even brighter than the day before, and all of them were itching to get back to the beach. Diego offered to stay behind so that Luna could finish her nuggets and have that bath that she missed out on the night before. So Kimon headed off to the beach, along with the other early risers at the resort, planning on meeting them there later. The resort's beach was just a 10-minute walk from their chalet, and Kimon didn't even bother to take her phone or any belongings besides her towel with her. She and Diego fully expected to see each other again within the hour. September in the area also brings its fair share of juvenile sea lions that have been weaned from their mothers and are finally old enough to venture out into the water on their own. Inevitably, this influx of the inexperienced prey also brings in the predators. Just three months ago, there had been a fatal attack on a human from a great white right on the stretch of beach where Kimon was swimming. 
The warning signs and red flags were long gone from the sands now, and the country had all but forgotten about the tragic event. Besides attacks being incredibly rare, the oceans also have nets spun around popular swimming destinations to keep the bigger fish out and a slew of observation vessels that are constantly scanning the surface for sightings. How the 14-foot great white managed to slip through the nets and the searcher's sharp eyes is still a mystery. It literally came out of nowhere. Kimon was amongst 20 or so other swimmers, and there were four surfers in the distance riding the rather low waves. There were at least 10 people who were deeper in the water than she was. Kimon was only standing waist-deep in, watching the riders attempt to catch a decent wave. The only explanation is that the shark came from as deep as the water allowed it to go, and it applied the usual tactic when storming into a colony of sea lions. Great whites hurl themselves into the middle of the pack and bite down on the one who just happens to be closest to its jaws at the time. Whatever the case, one moment, Kimon was standing with her back to the sand, with Diego and Luna walking towards her. And the next, an enormous gray beast reared out of the water directly in front of her. Its mouth was already open and geared to strike before it even broke the surface. Kimon didn't stand a chance. There was no warning, no time to even think of turning to flee. The predator sank its teeth into her, engulfing Kimon's upper body whole. Only her head and legs remained outside its jaw. Diego, who'd had his eyes on Kimon when it happened, grabbed Luna and stuffed her face into his chest to spare her the gruesome sight that was playing out before them. The group around Kimon scattered, knocking each other out of the way to reach their children and to make it out to safety. The shark took Kimon like she weighed nothing, viciously throwing her from side to side. One older gentleman launched himself at the screaming woman. What he planned to do about the dire situation, no one knows. But it didn't matter. The shark's head slammed into him, sending him flying several feet away. His equally gray-haired wife grabbed him and pulled him out. As the water turned red and the people fled, several people called emergency services, and Diego could only stand watching as the love of his life was being ripped to shreds. Before the last of the hysterical swimmers were even out of the water, Kimon stopped screaming. But that didn't stop the animal from tearing at her. It let go, swimming off with a chunk torn out of her abdomen. After making a wide loop, just long enough to swallow, it struck Kimon's lifeless body again, this time making away with a piece of her left thigh. Diego couldn't take it anymore. He shoved Luna into the arms of the elderly woman who'd helped her husband out of harm's way. Diego was about to enter the water himself. It didn't matter that she was already dead, or that he stood a good chance of dying himself if he dared to go in, as long as he could get her out. The old man saw what he was about to do, and despite his bruised ribs and his age, he grabbed Diego and held him back, yelling at him that his little girl shouldn't be orphaned completely. Diego didn't hear a word of it, and he continued to struggle to get out of the surprisingly strong old man's grasp. The other swimmers came in, huddling around Diego. They kept him from going into the surf towards certain death. And that's where rescuers found them just seven minutes after the attack occurred, with Diego weeping in the center and the ravaged body of Kimon floating in the shallows. The shark had disappeared, satisfied with what it could get from Kimon, and it was never seen again. The poorest streets of Cape Town went into a deep mourning. The homeless and the impoverished went on a spree to steal flowers from homeowners' gardens in the more affluent parts of the city. And now, even two years later, Diego and Luna still find a bouquet of flowers most days of the week when they go in to open the store for the day. A constant reminder of Kimon and the day she met her terrifying final affliction.